Hi, everybody. Hi, Winston. And hi, everybody else. I know I said I was going to be there, but I had some parent stuff I had to handle here. So I'm just going to do it from my office. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for understanding. Good evening, everybody. Um, it is my pleasure to call to order the uh, reorganization meeting of the Bethlehem Area School District. Uh, roll call is Mr. Alozi. Here. Dr. Beckpooley. Here. Dr. Donaher. Here. Mr. Fashionetto. Here. Mr. Nyman. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Mrs. Schenkel. Here. Dr. Shively. Here. Mrs. Sinkler. Here. There are eight members present. Uh, if we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. And if you could please join me in a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. So tonight as we begin our reorganization meeting, uh, I will entertain nominations for a temporary chair for tonight's meeting. Uh, I nominate Mrs. Shankel for temporary chair. Are there any other nominees? Uh, if there are no other nominations, I will take a second uh, to appoint Mrs. Schenkel as temporary chair. Second, right. Sinkler. Uh, for a voice vote, uh, all those in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. So ordered. Uh, I will turn the meeting over to Mrs. Schenkel. Thank you. Um, may I please have a nomination for a president of the board of school directors? Yes. Mr. Fascinetto. Okay, any other nominations? May I have a second for uh, that nomination? Second, second. Shively. Okay, uh, may I have a motion to close the nominations for president of the board? So moved, Donna Her. 
Thank you. Um, and then a um, voice vote. Uh, voice vote. <laughs> uh, going to try that again. A voice vote for um, president then. Um, all in favor of Mike Fashionetto being the board president? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Schenkel. Uh, and thank you to members of the board for your support as always. Um, next, I will open the floor and call for a nomination for a vice president. Is there anyone who would make a motion to nominate someone for vice president? Mrs. Patrick. Uh, Dr. Donner has nominated Mrs. Patrick. Are there any other nominations for vice president? All right, hearing none, um, then a motion to close the nominations for vice president. So um, Sinclair. We had a few. Uh, Sinclair and Alozzi both motion to close nominations. Then since we only have one nominee, all in favor of Mrs. Patrick serving as vice president, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, congratulations, Mrs. Patrick. Thank you. All right. Um, and that will bring us on to courtesy of the floor. Anybody wishing to address the board on anything at this point, um, you can type in the Q&A. You can raise your hand and we can unmute you. And the same will go for the next meeting as well. So just to get you prepared, if you want to speak at any of the meetings tonight, you can enter your question in the Q&A box. And if you want to be um, unmuted and speak, you can just note that um, when you type in the box. But seeing none at this point, uh, I will look for a motion to adjourn the reorganization meeting. So, so moved. moved. Thank you, Dr. Donner. Second, Mrs. Patrick. Um, all in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 All right, and no one opposed. Um, so we will roll right into our combined committee meetings for tonight. Um, so you will see the agenda there before you. And we will begin with courtesy of the floor. Again, anybody wishing to speak, um, you can type your comment in the Q&A box or ask to be unmuted. This would be on agenda items only. All right, seeing none at this point, then we will get into our discussion items. The first one is our uh, proposed bid awards for the Farmersville HVAC renovation project. Mr. Stein, some good news on those bids. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we had a bid opening last Thursday and uh, favorable results here. So um, you can open up the second attachment, please. Or actually the first one's good, first one's good. Um, we had uh, four bidders each for our mechanical electrical contracts, um, good pricing. Um, we're going to be awarding, recommending to award to Trev's Mechanical on the mechanical contract. That's the same contractor who did uh, most recently the Spring Garden HVAC project. And also on the electrical front, um, we have Wind Gap Electric who was uh, also at the Spring Garden uh, HVAC project, as well as our Nitzman electrical contractor. So uh, two contractors we have good experience with, um, have done good work for us. Um, the pricing uh, came in uh, under our budget, which is uh, also a bonus. Um, so when you check that second um, attachment there, we can look at the, uh, the budget real quickly. So there's a mechanical contract, there's uh, one, one alternate we selected there for a hot water heater system for the building. So we're gonna take that for $54,000 for a $3,054,000 kind of contract, like a contractor there for 982. Um, we also have uh, the controls package. We've uh, done that the last couple um, HVAC projects where we uh, uh, go through a state contract to contract with Johnson Controls who currently has our district-wide integration system. So that's, uh, 551, 525, uh, that gets us through uh, uh, connecting all that equipment to our existing system to be able to control it and monitor it. Uh, we have a permit allowance in there. Uh, that's something we've done recently as well. So we'll come back to you in the summer once we know the permit costs from, uh, from, the, uh, from the township and uh, we'll resolve that. And you can see there are a total of 4.6. We have the design fees um, for 300,000. And then another agenda item coming for the field observation fee. So this is the, uh, uh, the Dewey engineering fee that, you know, it's a little bit more than the summer project, six and a half percent, but not quite necessary 
not not quite as large as a Nitsu Middle School, obviously at $50 million. So uh, this is a non not to exceed fee for the on-site field observation. Uh, a little bit of uh, healthy allowance in there, contingencies uh, to get us through the project. So all in at 5.2 million. Um, our budget was 5.5, so we're very, very pleased to see numbers uh, where they came in with the quality contractors we have. Sorry, I'm muted there. Thank you, Mr. Stein. And you know, definitely good news, a little under 3 million under budget, and that includes on top of that, the contingency. So really good news. Um, hopefully it sticks. Um, all right, any questions on that? If not, you'll notice multiple agenda items related to that information that was shared 4.01. Two, three, and four all are all related to um, the summer project there at Farmersville. So if everyone is good with that, we will move those forward next week um, to the voting meeting. Okay, good. Next thing we have there, uh, Dr. Roy, Dr. Silva, I don't know who's gonna take this. It is a, a draft plan for the instructional delivery model should we enter into some sort of school closure, whether short-term or long-term. Dr. Silva. Thank you, Mr. President. If you'd pull up the handout. Um, the overview of this uh, supports the old maxim, good luck favors the prepared. So even though we have no imminent plans for any school closure or district closure, we always want to make sure that uh, we have plans laid out, uh, organized, and much of the work that we've been doing uh, at the principal level, we've also been consulting and giving updates at the board committee level, and this is a follow-up to last, last week. Um, when we're talking about instructional delivery uh, using the blended model, of course, we're talking about synchronous, which is real-time instruction, and asynchronous, which is independent, not fixed to a schedule time. And our best, uh, best knowledge of using asynchronous, a blend of asynchronous and synchronous time is to support the learning that students need. Obviously, there's a, a, a good place for synchronous where it provides structure, regularity, uh, the ability to communicate uh, with certainty. Uh, but then again, we don't want students, for instance, a middle school student to be sitting in front of their Zoom for eight times for 45 minutes at a time. So it's a nice blending of synchronous and asynchronous activity supports our district's goals. The first column you see there is what we have now, our hybrid and e-classroom learning setup. We're in the hybrid, obviously the e-classroom is 100% synchronous or uh, is 100% virtual. Uh, but as far as the hybrid, uh, we have a, a blend of synchronous where it's in person two days a week and then independent on the other two days where that alphabet is not present in school. We're finding that a lot of our student achievement data, which we'll look at in the following month, uh, is staying pretty steady and pretty strong, largely because of the connections that the teachers and students are making in person in the hybrid format. So that's good news. Uh, we all know that first column pretty well as far as that 50-50 that blend. The second column is uh, what we would call single remote learning day. And that would, we've already had a day like that. It was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, where instead of bringing children in uh, for whatever reason, we um, go with remote learning where uh, the, the children, if they're by alphabet on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, and that Tuesday happened to be the day, they would do the more in per, uh, swap out in-person instruction for Zoom instruction. Uh, single remote learning day could be used if we needed just one day for a, a school closure related to COVID related issues, or if it was like before Thanksgiving or even coming up on Tuesday before the uh, holiday break. Uh, we communicate that to our faculty and our principals and they have designed next layer down so that students and parents will be ready to make good use of that time. If we would find ourselves because of a health need to uh, close school to in-person learning and go 100% virtual in the short term, the third column is what we would be following, uh, which uh, basically just follows the the same philosophy of a single remote learning day, but spread out over numerous days that in, instead of having in-person on-stage instruction, we would have Zoom instruction for those letters of, al of the alphabet and students would work independently <clears throat> on the off days. 
uh, e-classroom students would largely continue as they're doing now because they've been uh, asynchronous. They've been online for the entire time. We don't have the last column, the long-term remote learning plan, because hopefully we never have to even move in that direction. Obviously last year in the spring, we had a long-term remote learning plan and that was an emergency plan. This one would be much more deliberate in its planning for a blend of synchronous and asynchronous instruction. Uh, we would uh, move more towards the success that we have had with our elementary e-classrooms that has, has a schedule, but then also includes in that schedule asynchronous time for students to work independently as needed. Uh, we have had numerous meetings on the long-term remote learning if we would need it. We're not putting it out right now. We're not bringing it forward uh, for uh, at this point, but given the circumstances in the state of Pennsylvania and in the county knowing COVID, we should be prepared if necessary for a short-term remote learning situation. And uh, I'm here to report that our principals have not only shared that bigger picture, the schedule and how it'll work with their families, but over the last uh, week or so have made uh, supportive materials that could also, uh, you'll see going home. And we've even aligned the curriculum to a weekly uh, short-term closure. So, okay, we're, uh, we're ready for our good luck for being prepared. Uh, hopefully any of these four are obviously not as what we would like to do. I mean, the best form of instruction is five days in person with students in front of us and, and what school has always been. And when principals are feeling a little glum or uh, you know, you're, you're looking at the, the news and feeling a little uh, you know, disappointed about what school uh, compromises exist within, a, uh, within the pandemic, I remind everybody that those four columns couldn't even be imagined nine months ago. And here we are talking about how we designed them, the pluses and minuses of each one, and each of those having elements that will be real lessons for us moving forward. So hats off to the principals and the teachers who have been working their way through synchronous and asynchronous instruction, the technology development, um, preparing for the worst, but doing their best every single day. The message to teachers and principals is we're not gonna be perfect this year. We just have to be as good as we can be. And we have to make sure that our, the things that we do when we're on stage with students, whether that's face-to-face -face in a classroom or when we're synchronously uh, on Zoom with them, we have to make sure the main things are the main thing and that we're covering, covering that content so that in subsequent months, they have that foundation. And our data, thank goodness, are showing us that it's working. So Mr. Fascinetto, no need for action on this one other than a report that we have a common framework and common vocabulary for our steps forward. Hopefully we'll stay right where we are right now in our current hybrid e classroom model. Uh, moving towards a successful second semester. All right, thank you, Dr. Silva. Questions on the instructional plan. So we'll just go around Dr. Beck Cooley and then Mrs. Patrick. Um, just for clarification, why we decided that even if we go all remote learning, particularly at the secondary level, when e-classroom students are, are sort of part of scheduled hybrid classes, why they wouldn't be just sort of woven in with their last names Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday sessions? For, for a short-term short closure or a longer-term closure, the secondary e-classroom students do join their hybrid class rosters. So uh, the teacher would be able to teach them all as a group. We can't do the same at the elementary level because those 44 classes in, are already separate. Correct. Yeah, I was specifically asking about the secondary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's great. Ms. Patrick. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify too, under the short-term remote learning, it says that the 2.5 days of instruction would be aligned to a bell schedule. So would that lead me to believe that say middle school starts at 8.05, they would be logging on to log into homeroom. And so it would be the same bell schedule as they would be as if they were in school. On the day of the alphabet where they were before in person, Okay. Uh, following their schedule, they would now be synchronously online following their schedule. So yes. Awesome. Okay. Could I ask one other question? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Well, I just had a, a quick question about um, the data that you referred to. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of data do we have regarding how students are doing? Um, and just like a little more detail. 
Uh, we have a, and I can get into that in a little bit more depth in January at the curriculum committee meeting. Obviously reading is the one that is most vulnerable and we're most concerned about, and uh, especially K to, K to three. And we, our measures are showing us right now that if a student in the mid-year uh, benchmark last year, the winter benchmark, we, we, we're comparing their results there, which was sort of the last benchmark of normal to the benchmarking we did uh, in September when we came back in the in-person model. And we were looking at if those students were advanced and much advanced in the blue zone, or they were over the bar proficient in the green zone, or they were close to it in the yellow, or needed a lot of support in the red, did students generally hold their position going over into the fall benchmark? And we're seeing that the more secure your skills were in the winter benchmark when you left second grade, the more the strong likelihood is that they're still secured and you kept your position in the fall. Now, the, 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 the more need of the child, so those children who were yellow uh, last year in the winter time, still likely, yeah, we didn't have too many growing like we would have wanted between the mid-year last year and the beginning of the but there, there's some slips and we're doing it, of course, by grade, by school, by level. You know, so we're, our principal, we were just meeting today on that as a matter of fact, and how we adjust our interventions and our MTSS time to focus on those students who have lost their position or have slid. Meanwhile, at the secondary level, we're looking at the marking period one grades, uh, breaking that down, not just by grade level, but by subgroup of students how many students uh, last year at this time uh, may have had uh, one F or more in ninth grade or in sixth grade, and what's that comparison now? We see uh, some failures up a little bit, but not as dramatically as you may think. So I'll be, I'll be excited to present that. Uh, we're still uncovering some of that, some of the ahas from that data, but we'll, I'll have a full report for you in January. Thank you. That's very encouraging. I'm going to ask another question now, piggybacking <laughs> on what you just answered. Mm -hmm. Looking back at the first marking period, taking grades out, out of the situation, do you feel that the students are getting the same amount of material instruction? No. They, you just can't get the same amount, uh, the complete volume. Will they be able to get the essential amount and the essential knowledge that they need to maintain their position at grade level and be suited for the next level. Yes, we've been working hard to do that, but just the change, the newness, the changes in the format and the challenges that students face, um, I, I could not promise you, and I, and I will say flat out, they're not going to be able to cover the same breadth of information, but all the information that they need to and the skills that they need to, those are in sight. All right. Um, what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, columns two and three, the short, the single day and the short term are basically not a draft format. I mean, we have a plan because that could happen tomorrow for all we know. Correct. The, the long term one is where we're still, you know, we don't want to put the cart before the horse, but I mean, who knows? And you'd really have three weeks lead up to get to Correct. that. But would the intent be, and if it's too much to throw out at this point, I get, but would the intent be a four and a half days of, you know, some kind of blended? Would the kids see a teacher every day? Is that like what we're thinking or would we still stick to that Tuesday, Thursday hybrid type approach? Again, it may have some difference at level, but we yeah. are thinking to try to keep in person some type of synchronous interaction in the bloodstream every day if possible. Okay. That right. keeps, that has the benefit of, of being virtual, having students, uh, follow that structure. Now there are some students who have greater executive functioning skills sure. and following that is a little easier. And then there are other children younger, you know, if you're seven years old, I don't know if you have how much executive functioning skills you have. So there, we might use a different combination or mix of synchronous and asynchronous depending upon the student. But yeah, the general goal would be if they're going to be remote for a, a distance time, a tethering to the teacher is on a regular on the reg most regular basis is important. Okay, I think uh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, no, I think no. how we do that because you know if let's say there's 28 kids in a class, right now a few of them are online fully with e classroom, and then the rest are split. So I don't think we'd want to lump all 28 
to, in fact, I'm sure we wouldn't want to lump all 28 together into now Zoom classes. We'd want to keep it into into small yeah. groups. Yeah. And that's why the how we do it every day, every other day um, plays into it. And it depends on the course and the age of the children as well. But um, we would stay away from full class Zooms unless it's real just getting, you know, getting out some organizational information. Yeah, and that makes sense. I'm just more curious if, you know, we lose that that really intense focus two days a week, would we try and spread it out over more? And I mean, certainly a lot of ways to do that. And hopefully we don't get to that, but yeah. um, certainly need a plan nowadays. Although to get to three weeks, it would have to be 2021 and it can't be 2020 anymore. <laughs> so it, it can't be worse, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that out loud. All right, other questions on this draft plan that you see? Oh, this is Patrick, go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry, this is my last one for the night, no, go ahead. I swear. Okay. Is there, um, what is keeping BASD from going five days online similar to how like an Allentown is? I would say there's two reasons. One, as far as what the evidence shows as far as what students are able to learn and retain in a blended format, require students to be able to do some uh, reflection on the modeling that the teacher does. So in our, for instance, in our reading, you may be familiar with the um, I do, we do, you do approach and the gradual release and the independence of the learner during the you do phase after seeing the model of the I do, we do. Blended learning, if it's done well, doesn't just simply try to make a technological solution to replicating the in-person experience. It reinforces the type of thinking and independence that the student's gonna need so that the student may synchronously see part either during the week or part of the day, depending on the model, the I do and we do by the teacher, but can do and should be able to do some independent practice that is the application of that if they're gonna be truly successful. So in terms of the pedagogy and long-term student learning and the independence of the student getting the essential skills that they need, they do need asynchronous practice. So that's part of the reason. Another one of the reasons, some of them are technical uh, uh, as far as, uh, especially at the elementary level. Uh, some are, you know, the best research in terms of how long do we want students online? How healthy is it for a student to be continuously online on Zoom, even if breaks are, are, are put in there? So if we can uh, make blended learning work and the student does develop some of that independent executive functioning and, under, and applying of their knowledge independently, that's what we want when they're in school under normal circumstances. We, want, we don't want them under the best circumstances to be empty vessels, just taking information from their teacher. We would want them to be, able to, um, to be able to have that blended learning. When students develop that skill and continue it and develop it over time, they tend to not only hit grade level targets, but they tend to have all the skills that they're gonna need subsequently. When they become exclusively dependent upon the teacher, that becomes extremely difficult for them to be dependent. So there are, there are technical reasons, you know, bandwidth and the devices and having them on Zoom. There's uh, how long do we really want to have a student structured even in front of the day for a child. But I would argue as a person um, really interested in trying to find the best ways of teaching and learning in the school district, if it worked the very best, it would require some degree of student agency and control beyond just the direct instruction of the teacher. All right. Uh, and I'm sorry, this, we have board members online remotely. Are you three okay? Any questions? Good. Mr. Losey? Real quick. Um, have you had any um, feedback, positive or negative? I know the first two columns are kind of what we're already doing, but given that the survey data that you've already had from the <clears throat> from the teachers, um, have you heard any more feedback regarding particularly um, the third column? Um, yeah. Uh, although we didn't present- Or administrators, the, sorry. Yeah, from the administrators and from the, the survey data that we had from the parents and the teachers, the short-term remote learning plan seems to be consistent with the preferences and uh, the agreements of the parents and, and uh, teachers. 
So it wasn't as if there's something in the short term remote learning that is contrary or completely opposite to the preferences expressed by the teachers and by the parents. And that's encouraging because the, 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 to have the form and the function meet the preference that gives that keeps something else from being a distraction in the learning. All right. That? Other questions? Everybody else is good. Okay. So uh, we'll put that off to the side, knowing that it's out there and hopefully we never make it all the way to the right, but thank you for the effort put into that plan. Um, that, any other informational items? I don't see anything on the agenda and we're good. Okay, so the first four facility items we're already okay with, they related to the Farmersville renovation project. And then next up we have 4.05, which was the Elevation Inc. subscription that's dealt with our ESOL monitoring as far as testing and academic data. Anything else anybody wants to add beyond that? Okay. Um, then you see the contract price there and it's a 12 month subscription. Next on the agenda is 4.06, which is a short term um, agreement for um, an update to software. Am I getting that right? I'm going very crazy. It's yeah. Let me turn myself off. Yeah. Um, this is this is something that we need to do. Um, and uh, although my staff is my server infrastructure staff, um, they're very knowledgeable. Um, they would just like kind of someone looking over their shoulder to ensure that everything goes okay. And so uh, we don't expect a whole lot of time with the vendor, but we just wanted to have that. Uh, have uh, someone looking over their shoulder because it, this could take down the house, so as to speak, <laughs> and not in a good way. <laughs> sure, thank you for that. And I see you're estimating about eight hours worth of time, so not a huge agreement there. Right. Everybody okay with that? All right, 4.07, um, Dr. Roy has been nominated to serve as a board member of the Community Action Committee of Lehigh Valley, so we have that on there. Um, I don't know, did they require that? that we approve? Yeah, so why, okay. yes, so typically, that doesn't require board approval, but because I, the, I guess the seat that they've asked me to hold is like for a public entity, government, okay. school district, and so the governing body has to uh, nominate. And I'm looking. I, this is I've actually came off several boards over the last few years. I've um, still on the United Way board, but um, this is a good opportunity for an organization that does a tremendous amount of work in the community around economic development and small business development, housing. Um, and uh, I think our district um, could really benefit from having a more aligned relationship with them. So this is, I think is a great opportunity. I'm looking forward to serve. Okay, good. That was my second question because we could just vote no and get you out of it and you could blame it on your board, but sounds like you're looking forward I would have to avoided it. getting to this point if that was the case. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All right, well, that, we appreciate, um, I know you don't have a lot of time, but that's a, a great place to dedicate resources to. So thank you for that. Um, Mike, can I just make a comment? Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited that Dr. Roy would be asked to join that committee with the retirement of uh, Alan Jennings looming. It's going to be important that we have uh, people like Dr. Roy on that committee making the decision as to who's going to follow uh, Mr. Jennings because he has been a, a, a real stalwart in that regard. So I am, uh, I'm very much in favor of Dr. Roy being on that committee. Thanks, and that was actually part of my, my I think it's a critical time for CACLV to hire a new executive director after 30 or so years. So I'm happy to be able to have a, uh, a role in that. Yeah, great point, thanks Dean. Okay, uh, and that's our agenda items that we'll see next week. Um, and if there's nothing else, that brings us to courtesy of the floor. Anybody wishing to speak um, on anything, you can put it in the Q&A box. I do not really see anything in the Q&A box. So um, we will move on, open forum. Any board members have anything they wanna add? Dr. Roy? If I could add, I probably should have done this under information items, but just a few numbers um, to share publicly with regard to um, COVID since we came back to school uh, after Thanksgiving, we see the numbers continue to skyrocket in the state and in the community. So uh, last week, we had between Monday and Friday, we had a little over 70 positive cases reported to us of students or staff. Now, the, the 
most all of those happened over break. So that was the fortunate part that we weren't in school for close contacts and so forth, but still 70 Monday to Friday. Today alone, we had 24 cases reported to us, uh, 14 of which will are, as we speak, being added to the dashboard because uh, they, were, they were 14 cases where kids or staff were in school last week on December 1st, 2nd, 3rd, or 4th, uh, and then 10 that um, are beyond the 14-day period, so it happened over break, but they haven't been in school since 1120 uh, was our last day before uh, we were in the buildings before Thanksgiving, so 24 today, so that is concerning, um, so that's on pace to beat last week's uh, numbers. We're continuing to watch that and uh, go school by school, which is uh, you know what we attested to with the uh, state is looking at the school by school numbers um, and make sure we're um, you know abiding by that guidance as well. And, and as always, we're in regular contact with the Health Bureau um, monitoring all of those things. All right, thanks for that update. Um, anything else open forum? All right, I don't see anything in the Q&A box. So we will have an executive session following this meeting. Uh, what are our topics tonight? Uh, personnel and student discipline. Personnel, student discipline, thank you. Um, with that, if there's nothing else, motion to adjourn. So moved. Dr. Donner, thank you, second. Second, Patrick. Mrs. Patrick, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back next week for our regular meeting.